Okay. Oops. Hello, uh, viewers, and welcome back to Let's Read Fault Milestone 1. Um. Yeah, last time. Oh, that's a train. <laughs> of course. Um. Last time when we were about to leave, we were going to meet Rune, and she was going to give us something, which we found out was some sediment, but she got caught, and um, her boss, the guy that everyone in town's kind of scared of, confronted us and told us we should just leave now, and he'll deal the punishment to Rune, so that's probably not going to happen. We should try to save her but we only have uh three days left i think before we get uh i forgot what they called it like mana sick or something where her body's mana stream transforms or something and we won't be able to leave the outer pole so we got a time limit <laughs> also this and the next episode are probably gonna be the only videos next week since i finished say on utah and I'm probably going to take like a week or two off to like look for a visual novel I want to read, so... Yeah, only two videos a week. Oh well. This that gives me more time to record these in advance, which is nice. So yeah, let's just continue. We missed some, uh, Ritona ellipses, but yeah. Hmm? Ritona? I don't know. Selfin continues to stare in the direction that Rudo left. That's his name, Rudo. He looked pretty cool, honestly. <laughs> her face showing her refusal to accept the outcome. It's natural. Even I can't accept this. So Rune is... a slave? I'm not sure. Rudo's explanation was extremely vague, you know? Not saying what she is. Again, still think she's some man-made thing, whether it's a android or a homunculus-type being. As if he was intentionally speaking in circles to obscure something. Ritona? Yes? I was wondering what my father would have done if he were in our place, but... I'm struggling to find an answer. Slavery. I've only ever heard about it in stories. Hmm. If King Bala were here. Oh, there's choices in this game? I thought it was kinetic. Oh, shit. Wait, let me save then. Really? Oh my god, my double clicking mouse. Wait, I have to look that up. That's a big mistake on my part if there's choices in this game. Fall Milestone 1 Guide. Cause I'm, I swear, <clears throat> I swear it's supposed to be kinetic. Or maybe it's just like choices that don't matter. Yeah, I think it is, cause there's nothing really talking about it. Well, we have a safe point anyways if we somehow get a bad ending. Oh my god, I can't even click right. Alright. He would intervene, he would dismiss. Well, we heard, all we heard about him is that he's super nice and kind of an airhead. So I'm guessing he would intervene. If he's like Sophine. I'm sure he would intervene one way or another. Perhaps now or at a later opportunity. Yes, you're right. Rune or Sarah, was it? Her safety is certainly a concern. But more importantly, he would have found out whether or not slavery is still being practiced here. Probe and investigate. That was one of King Bala's favorite phrases. While other countries often took issues straight to the battlefield, 
Rosenheide has always prioritized conducting a thorough investigation, first to determine the proper course of action on their culture, their character as a nation, their values, the maintenance of the path down, taking all of it into consideration to find true justice. However, if, if slavery really was being practiced here, and that simply isn't an issue of differing cultural values. Well, didn't they say that they're slave traders? <laughs> so maybe it is practice or it could just be illegal. Uh, I guess it doesn't say anything. In this world, there are things that are absolutely evil. And I believe it is part of Rosenheide's duty as a representative of the Alliance to stamp out these evils. <laughs> Two trains in like five minutes. As per usual. There's no justice in allowing the exploitation of people for the selfish desires of others. Yes. Violence is certainly out of the question, but we can get a little rough. In this day and age, lines between good and evil are blurred. That's why, as people who can extend a hand to others, we must take more aggressive action. Even if we can't affect any change this instant, we must at least take action. At the very least, I'd like to confirm room safety. Selfie's clouded, satisfied expression brightened considerably, but... Still, I don't think... I don't think I can come to a decision. Her expression went to Gen Clouds up. Mana shock, right? That's what it's called, not mana sickness. This was pretty close. Yeah. This isn't something for me to decide on my own. However, there's no need to worry about anything. I've already come to a decision of my own. Let's set a time limit. What? That man, Rudo, he told us three days, but I feel that's cutting it too close. Let's pin it at two days. Yeah, because they still need time to escape the country. Two days to save Rune. Let's go. No matter what the outcome, we leave the Outer Pole the day after tomorrow. Until then, we do our best to help. Is that alright with you? Y yeah. Well then, your orders? Ritona, yes. Let's let's help Rune out. It shall be done, my lady. We begin our investigation by asking the residents of the town that we met. I recall the route we took as we did our shopping. This is the central district. The person closest here should be probably the lady at the general store. We come across the well-rounded lady, whom we purchased a map from yesterday, as she was clean, cleaning her storefront. Excuse me, do you have a moment? Oh, welcome back. Is there anything I can help you with today? Actually, we have a few questions about Rune. Do you mind sharing a bit of your time with us? Rune? Oh my, what could that be? Uh, huh? What do you mean? You don't remember us? What are you talking about? Don't play jokes on me. Of course I'd remember what happened just one day ago. She's the girl who was with us. Hmm? The girl who was with you was Sarah, right? Look. Looks like we'll have to use Sarah from here on. Hmm. What's wrong? Your faces look pale. Yesterday, she introduced herself to us as Rune. Oh my, I wonder why she would do that. I apologize for my rudeness earlier, but I'd just like to clarify things. That girl who was with us the other day is named Sarah, yes? Yep, that's right. The lady shakes her head. Sarah's been assigned to maintenance work on the power grid here, so I see her maybe once a month. Power grid? You see that bot looking thing over there? She points at a bot sitting in the corner of her store. <clears throat> there are a number of long cil cylinders jutting out of the box, extending down to the ground. What is that? You don't know about the grid? 
You sure are behind the times for some for someone so young. You know about the mana mine outside of town? They extract mana from there and send it through pipes to every household in here. So there's some kind of filter that has filter or something. Or other in that bot Ugh, messed up. So there's some kind of filter or something or other in that box that has to be replaced once every month. Okay, so they're using mana like electricity. And the one who does that for us every month is Sarah. So our work isn't just excavating in the mines? That's why I'm sure of it. Maybe you just heard wrong. That can't be it. She was very particular about her name when she was talking with Selphine, so I remember it very clearly. Hmm. And why did she use a pseudonym? A reason to intentionally use a false name. Perhaps she was part of some kind of scam? No, if she were a scam, then Rudo should have taken me up when I offered the mana. If they were both accomplice, accomplices, accomplices, then what would have made much more sense? Then that would have made much more sense. However, Rudo refused my offer without a second thought. So if there isn't a scam, then what could it be? All right then, does anything come to mind when we mention the name Rune? Rune, eh? Well, it's just a normal girl. She stops talking mid-sentence. Her expression darkens as well, or so it seems to me. Now that you mention it, I remember one particular girl named Rune, but this story isn't a pleasant one. What do you mean by that? At the Zevitz, uh, there was a girl who was named that. Oh, I mean the family, not the company. But apparently she died about six years ago. Hmm? Exclamation marks. She died? I don't really know the details myself. It's all just old rumors, so I don't know what it is and it, what is and isn't truth. But it's a fact that the Zevitz family had a daughter named Rune. Well, I've never seen her since, so maybe the rumor of her dying really is true. Could we have the details of that story? That girl was a devil in disguise. Some people believe that and others didn't, but I'm sure she was. That damn girl should have never been born in the first place. P please calm down. We're talking about a mere child here. Was she a little naughty? Regardless of what happened, she was still a child. Referring to her to that way isn't very fitting. If you're talking about any normal child, I'd agree with you there. But you just don't know who she was. That's why you can still think that way. Are you that certain? I have you know, I have three kids of my own. I've experienced more than my fair share of bratty little kids. But that room, she was just worlds apart. Everywhere she went, you can Bet disaster soon followed. It's hard to imagine her lying about all this. But she was still just a child, right? How do I put it? She'd make her hair stand on end. I heard rumors that she would be violent when out of sight. But when you meet her in person, she would be so prim and proper, it was almost sickening. She acted very mature, even though she was just a little child. Every time you spoke with her, it felt like she was planning something. At the age of seven, she managed to put that kind of pressure on an adult many times her size. You'd understand what I meant if you met her with her too. Well, not that you can though, now that she's dead. Train break. Ellipses. Say, Ritona. Yes? She mentioned Zevitz. Do you think they have anything to do with that Rudo person? Hmm? Wait, don't tell me. Did you actually meet Rudo? Yeah, just a while ago at the Central District. Oh my word, that's just unheard of. What do you mean? I've never heard of him ever just walking around town like that. Say, um, was that rune related to Rudo somehow? She was his little sister. Poor Rudo, he's still so young, but both his parents and his little sister passed away one after the other. 
Now he has to manage the entire company all by himself. Eh? Excuse me? Oh, I'll be right there. Sorry, girls. Looks like the story time's over. I've got a customer. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, sorry for coming by during business hours. We appreciate the information. Thank you. His little sister. Looks like we've... Is that a helicopter? No, that's a plane, right? I don't see it. God damn. Busy day. Looks like we've gotten more questions than we have answers, eh? Is this girl we met yesterday Rudolph's little sister? Well, I wouldn't bet on it. What makes you say that? Maybe the rumors that she died were all wrong? She did say that it was a long time ago, and that she doesn't remember so well. If that is true, then that means Rudolph treats his little sister as an object, and forces her to work in the mana mines like a slave. Wouldn't it? I don't know why, just, just interrupting here, but like, I don't know why they're going to like slavery as soon as they heard about someone working in mines, right? I mean, it could be completely different, but miners are just like not slaves. I know a lot of people who mine. Well, I don't know them personally, but my grandfather used to work in a mine because he lived in Sudbury, which was a mining city. So, I mean, it's not... Obviously, it can be hard labor, but it's not like slavery. So I don't know why they're jumping to that conclusion right away. But I guess she is. She does look like a small young girl, so it would be odd. Despite her taking a, did she take like a punch or something to the face by that customer in the bar? Yeah, whatever. Just my thoughts on that. <laughs> Maybe. It's something that isn't out of the ordinary for this country. I certainly don't want to imagine that kind of scenario, though. Hmm. Lots of ellipses. Huh? Ratona? What is it? Are you alright? You're looking a little pale. Hmm? I'm feeling slightly lethargic. There's also a heat I feel. It's quite unpleasant. It's strange, like every muscle in my body is slowly losing tension. The man inside my body seems to be diffusing outwards, thanks to the osmotic pressure from the difference in mana concentrations. I'm fine. But more importantly, how are you feeling, Selphine? Hmm? I feel perfectly fine. Alright. You must be feeling mana shock, right? I wonder why I feel perfectly fine. Hmm. This is just a theory. It is said that use of mana has an effect of shortening one's lifespan. Royalty need to be able to live as long as they possibly can as well. That being the case, they don't use craft in their day-to-day -day lives. Using craft that they could instead have an attendant perform is actually considered taboo. They mustn't trouble themselves with the hassle of a daily routine. There are far more important things for them to concern themselves with. Makes sense. Naturally, Selfie is no exception to this. It's probably because, unlike me, you don't use any mana craft on a daily basis, which means the onset of symptoms takes longer. A small relief. If my symptoms worsen, I can use that as a basis to determine when the onset of mana shock will occur for Selfie. Ritona, my lady, this is another order. Selfie looks at me straight in the eyes as she continues. Take care of yourself. Hmm? If you feel that you're in danger, then I want to leave the outer pole immediately. So please, if it comes sooner than the three day limit, then let me know as soon as you can. I understand. For the time being, I truly do feel fine. This is probably just my unfamiliarity with a sensation I'm experiencing for the very first time. Okay. However, we don't have a concrete plan for while we're here in the outer pole. That's not exactly very good. Just asking around isn't very efficient either. Is there someone who knows the ins and outs of the city who we could speak with? Maybe the tailor guy? He seems like friendly with everyone. 
Say, Ratona. Yes? How about we ask Hertzbon? That's the tailor guy. Just didn't remember his name. Achievement debt. Chapter 4, Spearing the Shadow. Hmm? Not reading that. Apparel. Glad to be closed. What? A den? Closed right in the middle of the day? Is he at that tavern again? Hmm. The tavern at this time of the day? No, I think he's inside. Eh? I gently push against the door, and it opens. I knew it. Uh, um, can we just go in like this? Most likely. Um, so you're not 100% sure? Ah, wait for me! Hey, Hertzbon, you in here? I intentionally call out for him in a loud voice. If my hunch is right. Uh, 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 oh, he's just hung over. <laughs> Whoa, there's someone over there. It looks like I was spot on. Selfie quickly hides herself behind my back. Hertzbon, sorry to intr intrude, but we need to talk with you. Go uh, ah. There's something there, Ratona. I can hear some creepy creature's voice. It's alright. That creature's pretty weakened right now. <laughs> the voice I hear from behind the shop sounds like the distillation of all the hatred in this world into a single audible groan. Ah. Uh, CG? Oh, no. <laughs> mm, that hit the spot. Ertron smacks his lips at the food that Selfie cooked up to help him recover from his hangover. If you want seconds, just let me know. This man just experienced the greatest luxury of his life. The country's princess just cooked him up a meal to help him through his hangover. You'd better be grateful for that meal. Are you mad, Ratona? Should I cook you up something too? I'm not angry, no. Not in the slightest. Oh, this stuff just brings you back to life. Hey, Missy, how old are you? You sure know how to cook up a meal to sober up an old drunk like me. <laughs> I just love cooking, and I've been cooking up stuff like this every day, Ratona Jets drop. Hmm? I cover Selfie's mouth at the speed of light. Mm. Selfie. Now that we've settled down, why don't we move on to the reason why we're here? Oh, r right. Please don't share information that doesn't need to be shared. No idea what's going on, but let's like I owe you one again. You got a question? Shoot. Thank you. But before we get into that, hmm? A toast for us for meeting again. As he declares it, he takes out a flask from inside his pockets. Ellipses. We're speechless. Speechless. Sarah? Nope, can't say I heard of her before. She was the other girl who was with us yesterday. Well, I've never met her since yesterday then. Basically, the only people I know at the cus are the customers at my shop and the regulars at the tavern. Is that so? I suppose she doesn't come to this part of town all too often. He does have a point. She did say that it was a long time since she'd had a meal at the tavern, which means it's very rare for her to come here. Does this store uh, also use that power grid? You goes from a different era or something? Of course we're using the power grid. Apologies, we're rather behind on information about this place. It ain't just this place. There's not a single place on the entire island that doesn't make use of the grid. You've got your own issues to deal with, right? You need to look into that stuff, or else you're not gonna be able to follow the conversation. If you don't do your research beforehand, everyone's gonna give you the evil eye, got it? Thank you for the warning. Damn, how many times have you been warned about this already? Anyway, so Sarah... So about Sarah, apparently sh she apparently works with Zevit Enterprise. She handles changing the filters on the grid. Wouldn't she come here every so often for that? 
Nope, and if she's with Zevitz, then all the more reason for her not to come here. Hmm? How come? Mana on this side of town doesn't come from Zevitz. Ours comes from Hivas. Ooh. They're pri- They're privatized. <laughs> the power grid system is privatized. It's like Rogers and Bell in Canada, I guess. Have it. Have is. That's right. They're the one and only rival of Zevitz. Instead of siphoning mana from the ground to remind inside Zevitz, Hevitz extracts it straight from the air and purifies it. From the air? The air here has no mana. We're in the outer pole, right? But the border between this place and the inner pole is just full of it. I don't really get all the details myself, but that mana from the air... What was it? Colored mana or something? See, colored mana isn't like the purified mana that you get from the ground. You can't just use it as it is. Purifying that mana and then distributing it is what Hivez does. Hmm. Well, anyway, I don't know about their free time, but Zevit's employees aren't going to be coming here on company time. That's for sure. Then, do you know anything about a girl named Rune? Suddenly. <gasps> music stops. With ellipses. Herv Herd Swan freezes. The moment he heard the name, he reacted just like the lady from the general store. Phew. Erdswan took a large swig from his flask and breathed a small sigh. That's a pretty heavy name to bring out. Is Rose Rune really that much of a problem child? Problem child? That's way too late. She was the devil's spawn. Another comparison to the devil. She took out my nephew's right eye. <laughs> really? Huh? What? What do you mean? Sorry, but I don't want to talk about this. And I don't want to spit on the grave of a kid who's kicked the bucket. No, uh... What's the matter? I figured I really shouldn't stick my neck where it doesn't belong, but... You two did save my life and all. There's a man called Al Bass in Zevitz Enterprise. If there's anyone who can answer your questions, then it's got to be him. For the meantime, head to the tavern tomorrow. I'm sure you'll meet him there. Triple ellipses to transition. Ooh. In an unstentuous boardroom, four men wearing suits were exchanging arguments. They were positioned distantly from each other, as if they had all if as if they all had specified seats, leaving empty seats between all of them. One man stood at the end of the room while the other three were seated. He had a gentle expression on his face as he argued with the others, with Sarah huddled close by him. Like I said, the or the original rule is that they must have one rest day, as well as proper compensation for their work. Please stop dragging this old topic back up. <laughs> Sarah? Rue? Ellipses. I know, I know. But that was the old rule. This entire discussion is pointless. It's already been ages since Sid's regulations were abolished. None of the other sisters have taken issues with them either. Sarah, what do you think about all this? I think trains are annoying. It's not even a go train, it's a via rail train. Who uses those? I apologize for my actions. See? You're the only one who's being selfish here, trying to make an issue out of it. Sarah, your actions here make you think you've somehow misunderstood your very reason to exist. You're the property of Zevit's Enterprise. You do understand that, right? Y yes. I'm not saying that we simply let this in entire incident slide. Just that we need to reconsider who's responsible here. Good grief, Albus. Just how many times do you want us to repeat ourselves? The point is, we don't even want to touch on the subject of the sisters altogether. You understand that, right? What's all this now? This was something we all decided together. You're right. 
The go-ahead was given by each and every one of us. That was because on paper, the numbers all look good, and most of the sisters are working well as miners. But the main reason why we were allowed the project to continue was because Sid would take the full responsibility for it. That was all in the contract, and you'd better not forget that. But we, the board of directors, decided that we should something happen to Sid. We did, all of us, decide that Rudo would sh shoulder the responsibility. He is the CEO of such a large corporation, and that position comes with obligations to match. Just how long are you gonna keep up that attitude? What is your name? Wait, wasn't that the Taylor boss guy? I don't know. Maybe. I'm not pronouncing that. Or could we? Oh! Oh no, that's gonna take forever to go up. In terms of sheer workload, he's handling far more than Sid ever has. Just look at how many people have come to this meeting and maybe you'll understand. It's sitting. This is why we kept warning you. Look, just look at the sad face on it. It just makes things even worse. I swear, why did Sid even use that expression? She's obviously doing this just to spite us. If there's a problem, fix it. Even better, if we can just get rid of it altogether. Simple as that. You know we can't just do that, right? That's why we're here talking about it. Sooner or later, moral problems like these were bound to crop up. I'm sure we all already knew that much. The way you talk is proof that you've lost sight of the real issues, and you're and the only thing you care about is the numbers, the bottom line. Ha! Morals, don't kid yourself. Numbers are everything. The bottom line is everything. This company isn't going to survive on charity. The numbers are what put food on your table, Albus. Calm down, you two. No need to get so worked up. Had to let you to explain to me why we have to waste our time on something like this. He makes a good point. While the arrangement is somewhat different from before, it's rather unfair that we continue to push all the responsibilities to Rudo. Gentlemen, I apologize for the delay. Rudo. Chief, thank goodness. Rudo, now that you're here, I need to get something off my chest. Every single one of the directors acknowledges your management skills. They're top notch. We have no problems with their qualities as a leader. But look at the attendance for this meeting. Out of 12 directors, only four are here. Not a single person from Lab 9 except Elvis has shown up. Vatha and the others had other matters to deal with. They would have been here otherwise. Except it's only the four of you from Lab 9 that just won't shut up about this whole issue. Most of us in the board of directors don't even want to concern themselves with this anymore. Honestly, all the trouble caused by this issue is doing nothing but creating unnecessary friction between us. And I want no part of it. I see now. The top four of Zevit's enterprise spent nearly an hour debating with absolutely no real results to show for it. Am I right? Why you? This incident notwithstanding. The inc this incident notwithstanding. I'm sure everyone has personally felt the monetary benefits generated by the sisters project. Am I mistaken? Well, that is true. Sarah. Sir? I already told you this. This silly, compensatory, pretend salary system has been annulled. Have you forgotten? No, I do remember. Rudo, we've already gone through this. Sid's condition was that the sisters are supposed to receive payment in cash or in time for their work rendered. The system allows them to choose either. Either. In this case, as long as. The on-site overseer gave her approval for the use of settlement as her payment. Then that still falls within the agreement. Sarah just did as she was told. I see. So you're basically 
So basically, you're saying that I'm simply trying to pin the pin some kind of blame on Sarah. Is that it? What? When I say compensation has been annulled, normally, you take that to mean the payment for your work has been scrapped, yes? The fact of the matter is that not a single sister has interpreted it to mean payment in cash is no longer allowed. There wasn't a single one that came asking for the conditions about payment in kind. I believe this is proof that the sisters, Sarah sighed, have understood the intentions of the board of the directors and myself. But, but, also why I'd rather not bring this up in public. We aren't in the lab, Albus. Outside of lab nine, at the very least, I am your superior. You will have to respect that. I apologize. I'll keep that in mind from here on. Moving on. Trains. Regardless, regarding this incident with Sierra, this will be discussed in the votation tomorrow. I believe this matter is heavy enough to merit discussion. Ha! Huh. That means this whole incident is your fault. However, everyone, you all seem to be making a very basic misunderstanding. Now once have I asked the board of directors about how to deal with this situation. All I've done is to sound the alarm. Perhaps some of you might have some kind of hidden agenda, or maybe it's simply a mistake on your part. I've given this considerable thought regarding Sarah's action. In any case, I consider this act to be tantamount to treason against the company. Rudo. I simply wanted to hear your thoughts on the matter. For it to have turned into some chaotic blame game, I'm not sure what to think. Mm. The entire board of directors may leave. I'm, I've noted your intentions, and we'll keep them in mind. Sarah. Yes? Do you understand why I find a problem with the actions you took? I do. So you do then. Why don't you tell me right here and now what exactly is the problem? It's... It's because... It's because I... I tried to take sediment without getting permission first. Wrong. It isn't? You don't actually understand the problem then. But... But I... The issue at hand is that despite your understanding of the concept of the crime, you willingly committed the crime regardless. <sighs> I... I... Sarah. Yes? I will contact you once the board of directors has reached a consensus. Until then, return to your usual duties. Work harder to make up for the time wasted here. Understood. You are not allowed to leave your quarters outside of your shift. Yes, sir. Now pay attention to what I'm about to tell you now. Your room will not be locked, nor will there be anyone monitoring you. You are free to obey or disobey my orders. You can just throw everything away and escape. You can even fight back and kill Albus and I if you desire so. Think hard about exactly what you want to do from now on. Do you understand why I'm trying to tell you? I do. <laughs> Good. You may resume your duties. Yes, sir. One more thing. Your emotions are an eyesore. Stop showing them to us. Don't ever smile in front of me again. That's an order. Oh. Understood. Oh yeah, it is his name. So that guy was the father of, uh, of, uh, I'm pretty sure, right? Rakowski. They look the same anyways. Oh, that was a fire line. That scared the shit out of me. <sighs> Holy shit. Anyways, we're done here, I think. Time? 40 minutes? Good episode. Um, shit. Double clicks. Oh my god, I hate this fucking map. Look at this. <laughs> uh, thank you for watching. That was a pretty interesting episode. Um, hopefully we'll get... They keep teasing us with uh, what Rune is. Hopefully we'll get that soon. Eventually, Jesus Christ. Stop spooking me. But yeah, I'll see you next week. And then, new visual novel will be out like in probably like two weeks. 
the new series. But yeah, thank you for watching as always. I'll see you next time. Bye.